Hi everyone, I'm Sangeeta. I'm the CECOM application specialist at Delmec. And today I'd like to tell you about performing correlative light and electron imaging on the CECOM platform. So let's start by taking a quick look at optical imaging or fluorescence microscopy. How that works is, as you can see in the image, there's a schematic of a fluorescent molecule. If such a molecule in its ground state absorbs some light, which takes it to an excited state, from which it decays to a lower energy excited state, then the difference in energy is given out as fluorescence. And by detecting this fluorescent light, you can essentially detect anything that such a fluorescent molecule is bound to. And that's how optical imaging works. So by tagging different parts of a cell with different fluorescent molecules, or by making different parts of a cell express different fluorescent proteins, and by imaging such a sample in an optical microscope, you can image different colors and different parts of the cell. This provides functional information about the sample because that is what you are labeling. Electron microscopy, on the other hand, is a technique which provides structural information about the sample. So by tagging a sample with heavy metal stains, which are not specific, but bind to pretty much everything in the sample, and by then imaging such a sample in an electron microscope, you can get structural information about the sample, and how it works is shown in the schematic here. If a high energy electron beam is incident on the sample, it scatters off these heavy metal molecules and generates a whole host of electron energies from the low energy secondary electrons to the high energy backscattered electrons. And the scanning electron microscope has the corresponding detectors to detect these electrons and form an image based on them. The main advantage of electron imaging is its very high resolution, which we get because the wavelength of these electrons is much smaller than the wavelength of light. So CLEM, or Correlative Light and Electron Microscopy, is a technique which is a combination of these two imaging techniques. And why do we want to combine them? That's because CLEM gives us advantages of both the techniques. It provides information that one or the other microscope alone could not. As you can see in the image here, which is an image of the neural connections in the songbird brain, in green is visible the fluorescence image. In green, you can see the optical image, which is available now in the context of the cellular ultrastructure, which is visible in grayscale and which came from the electron image. So using such CLEM images, it's possible for researchers to understand the complex relationship between form and function by visualizing functional information in the context of structural information. The key advantages of doing CLEM in an integrated system are that firstly you can image structure and function in one system, in situ then. It's a non-destructive technique. You can have multicolor labeling of the samples and all of them can be visualized in the context of cellular ultrastructure. It's possible to relate the, the morphology and the performance in situ. And another significant advantage is that you can image unknown ultrastructure. Because one of the main disadvantages of fluorescence microscopy is that you only image what you want to image, because you only label what you choose to see. But electron microscopy, on the other hand, allows you to see everything which is there. You can also have long range labeling across the entire sample. So you can study the sample as it is without needing to make assumptions about the homogeneity of the sample. And you can identify cells or features in an unbiased manner, which is very difficult to do if you are basing it on morphology alone or on fluorescence imaging alone, because then you can make errors in identification. So in an integrated CLEM system, you can have all of these advantages in one system and have simultaneous imaging in the two configurations. And there is no need for sample transport or contamination or damage. Because of all these advantages, integrated CLEM has applications in a lot of fields. So the first being geology, 
So you can characterize different types of organic matter based on their fluorescence response and you can measure the organic porosity and such parameters. In material science, people can investigate the zeolite nanostructure with the electron image and the performance with fluorescence to enable rational catalyst design. In neuroscience, it's possible to map the entire connectivity of a brain. In marine biology, for example, you can study the relationship between form and function in microbial processes to understand the role that microbes play in the environment. You can have live cell imaging, where you can study cells or organisms in their native environment, which is liquid. And in pathology, you can accurately identify disease based on the guidance from the fluorescence information and the verification from the electron image, rather than take it out of the microscope and take it to a TEM, which is expensive and time consuming. So the CECOM is a platform for performing integrated CLEM. It's, a, it's an optical microscope, which is retrofitted onto any scanning electron microscope. Like you can see in the image on the left, the CECOM platform is encased in the blue cover and it's fitted onto a standard scanning electron microscope. So how does the CECOM work? In the image on the right, you can see the schematic. The sample, which has the cells of interest, is the orange disk. From the light source, the light is guided onto the sample. The fluorescent molecules are excited and the fluorescent light is detected back on the camera. Subsequent to this, the electron beam is made incident on the sample. The secondary electrons or the backscattered electrons that are generated are detected and a scanning electron image is formed. And this, both imaging schemes are implemented inside one platform, one integrated system. So why do we choose to do it this way? Or why is iClem performed? The main highlights of the CECOM are that it's possible to have an automated overlay between the electron image and the optical image. One of the main challenges in conventional CLEM is that performing a manual overlay between the two images is very laborious, time consuming and prone to error. In the CECOM, the automated overlay is performed based on cathodoluminescence that is generated when the electron beam strikes the sample. So this creates temporary fiducial markers which are used to perform the overlay in an automated manner. As I mentioned, having one system do both imaging schemes avoids sample damage or contamination because it avoids transportation between microscopes altogether. And you can be sure that you're imaging exactly the same features or region of interest in both systems because it's done simultaneously. And live cell imaging is possible, where you can image cells in their native state using light and electrons in one system. For more information or questions about integrated CLEM, please visit the Delmic website. Thank you for watching.